Life after death. We do not die but pass into another world into a new life. Life after clinical death and eyewitnesses story. I was inside the schoolhouse together with my friends and after school we were waiting for the music teacher and meanwhile playing around a little bit here and there um, and there were also some training devices pr there which are called Sweden boxes which were relatively high and arrayed side by side and there on these Sweden boxes we were playing tag and suddenly I lost my balance and fell backwards head first uh, onto the ground and from this moment on I was no longer aware of anything in my material surroundings. The only thing I knew is that I continued playing on top of these Swedish boxes where my, whereas my friends were looking down to the ground where my body was lying. But at this moment I didn't realize that. I was just looking down and I saw my body. Whereas my consciousness, I'll call it that, was on top of the Swedish boxes together with my friends. First, I had to think this through in order to find an explanation for what had happened. Um, and suddenly, I started panicking because my consciousness somehow realized what had happened. Like, oh dear, I'm no longer inside my body. As for me, however, I couldn't, still couldn't quite fathom the situation. At the end of the corridor there was a door, a big wooden door, and since I was still panicking, I wanted to go and get help. So I was floating through the corridor right up to the door, intending to open the door by hand. But arriving there, I simply passed through it, so to speak, and I realized, okay, you've passed through the door now. And then I passed through the door, hoping that there would be somebody, but nobody was there. So I went back into the corridor, again through the door, and, well, in a moment when passing through this door, I looked upwards where I saw a tunnel, a dark black tunnel, but at the end of the tunnel there was a light, a very bright and wonderful light, not comparable with our sun, it, because it was a light that was even brighter. But it was not hot, as we know it from our earthly sphere. Well, somehow I had the desire to move through the tunnel toward the light. So I approached the tunnel, and then I flew through this tunnel, and at the end of it, in the light, there was a figure with human characteristics, but without a body, as I have one then you might call this body a spirit body? Yes, some people call it an astral body, but you can also define it as a spirit body. Well, this female figure, for me it was a figure of female nature, uh, stopped me on the border between the tunnel and the light and said to me on a telepathic level, when crossing the threshold, you will be dead. What she meant was that when crossing the threshold, I would not be able to return to Earth. Then I said, well, what should I do now? So she continued saying, come, I will show you something. And she said, just look down, and so I did, and then I saw the earth from above, our earth, and for me it felt as if I was inside the universe, so to speak. How big was our earth for you? 
It was huge for me indeed. But I also was looking out to the universe, so to speak, or into the universe. And I also saw several planets, as we can also see them from here. Well, she intentionally was showing me the Earth, saying to me, you can decide yourself if you would like to go back or if you prefer to stay with us here in the light. Since I didn't know this being and didn't know who she might have been, I thought about her offer. Meanwhile, she was explaining to me uh, a bit about how my future would look, but I was rather confused because I simply didn't understand the meaning of all this, nor where I was. She communicated to me the reason why it would be best for me to go back into my body and back to the earth, because I, now a spirit being, had decided myself, but if I had preferred to stay over there, I would have had to been reborn in order to go through the same phase again as I had planned it for me. She said, for me. Well, so I communicated to her that I cannot and will not leave my parents alone in view of their grief that they would would have gone through. And finally I decided to go back. Well, by means of my consciousness, I flew again back through this tunnel until I was standing beside my body, which meanwhile was lying with the back on the ground. Well, I was still standing beside my body until I decided to go back into it which I finally did. I hasten to add that I f felt neither discomfort nor pain outside my body, nothing of the kind. It was wonderful, light, and well, I just didn't feel anything. And the first thing I realized after having entered into my body was that I could breathe again because before it felt for me as if I, if I couldn't breathe. And my friends were there, and the teacher, who meanwhile had come to us, said to me and to my friends, oh, she's breathing again. And from this moment on, I felt everything. I felt that I probably had suffered a concussion. I felt pain. I felt sick and I was also confused because I was well aware of what I had experienced, what I had perceived, but I first had to fully and consciously accept the fact that I was again back in my body. Well, and thereupon I went quickly to the toilet together with my friend and then my parents came to pick me up and so I went home. And from then on my life has completely changed. I thought a great deal about God and the world which was not at all like me before. I had been raised Catholic but the church was not my world. But what I have done after this experience was that I have talked to my parents about it. But my parents said that all this would be figments of my imagination. And this made me quite sad because there was no opportunity for me to share my experience with others. So I was simply living with it until the present day. It's not always easy because in this light I also experienced so much love, a kind of love that we don't know here in our world because it's an infinite, unconditional love which I experienced over there and which in this way does not exist in our world. But from then on, I could better understand people in many ways. For example, when I was faced with their tragedy and suffering, 
aha about which I didn't care before, but if since then somebody was sad, I tried to comfort him, because I too have experienced this comfort in the light. In later years, you still had further experiences. How did this happen? I think that due to the preceding experience, I had apparitions of my deceased grandmother and also my best friend, who died when she was 15. Regarding my grandmother, let me explain to you that my parents are Italian, and at that time in Italy, it was the custom to have the coffin inside the house with the body in it. But I think that today this is no longer so. And in this case, beside the coffin, there was a sofa. Well, we were all standing behind each other in order to take leave from Grandma at the coffin. When I looked over to the sofa where I saw Grandmother sitting, at first I thought that this was an illusion, but then she made a gesture to me, meaning, hello, whereupon I hesitated and I thought, in reality, she's lying in the coffin. But I also asked myself if she would have resurrected. In fact, I couldn't deal with the situation. And then she said, everything is fine. I am still here. And suddenly I realized that everything was real, for me at least, and I wanted to tug at the jacket of my father in order to tell him, look, there's grandmother. But at this very moment, grandmother said no. She didn't say anything. She only made the card corresponding gesture, do not because people would otherwise have thought that I was going crazy, because they didn't see this at all. So I didn't do it, but I stepped forward to the co coffin, and on arrival there, I looked into the coffin and saw her body, and beside the body, there was the sofa with my grandmother sitting on it. And this was really extraordinary, because she was smiling at me, and I knew, well, then I knew everything is all right, and I was very happy, and was jumping around, and then my father came to me and said, don't be so happy, your grandmother has died after all. How old were you when that happened? At that time I was 12 years old. These phenomena were completely unknown to me before, though when I was younger I already had had apparitions in the night, but I didn't know anything about these phenomena before. Therefore all this was like an illusion for me. But after my near-death experience and the apparition of my grandmother, I gradually became aware that all this cannot be an illusion for me, and that I was living with it in this way. And when I was 15, my best friend, Petra, passed away. She was killed in a car crash, together with her mother and her father. And for this reason, I was completely shattered at that time, simply because I, because she was my best friend and because I couldn't say goodbye to her. This was very hard for me. But after about one week, while I was sleeping in my bed, uh, I woke up and looked around the room, which was bright now, comparable with the bright light I had seen during my near-death experience. First I thought I would go crazy or that I was hallucinating, but this was definitely not the case, because then I sat up in bed and saw Petra my best friend, standing there before me, but again, in a human shape, communicating to me telepathically. 
Hey, Isabel, I'm fine. Please don't be sad. Stop mourning. I'm fine. And I'll always be there for you. And it was such a relief for me to see her. Thereupon, I intended to call for my parents, and when I turned toward the door in order to call for them, the light disappeared and Petra with it. Well, this was still a further experience, which I'm carrying with me still today, and it's indeed a great feeling for me. Also because thereafter, I was able to calmly fall asleep and the next day I was happy again because this experience was simply relieving for me and from this point of time on I was no longer sad because I knew that she still existed. Miss Valerigo, what impact did all these experiences have on your future life? The most difficult thing for me was to bring together all these experiences with the secular view. The reason why this was so difficult might have been that I wasn't able to talk with anybody about this for a very long time, because it's obvious that other people most likely would have considered me to be crazy, and probably I I would also think along the same lines as they do if I hadn't experienced this myself. Because I'm a very discerning person and I don't believe everything that's being said and therefore I can well understand if people do not believe what I have experienced. So I was searching for answers to my questions which I have obtained from the relevant literature and when I realized that a great number of people have already had such experiences, this gave me a feeling of serenity and peace. For me, these experiences were a boon and a bane. The boon was that I was allowed to carry inside me, to this day, to carry inside me the heavenly love that I had received over there, still to this day, which is this unconditional love. Well, and it's still not so nice in the sense that I'm sometimes very sensitive. It's, it's very difficult for me to live here on this earth because I can't understand how or how it is for people, how far they can go. And it was not so nice and still isn't so to this day that I'm sometimes so sensitive that it's quite difficult for me to live here on earth because I can't understand how, well, how far people can go in order to harm each other. The connection between this experience and my life here on earth has been preserved for me and also I'll never forget this experience. I also have a sort of access to, how shall I put it, to the woman who had welcomed me uh, on the astral plane, who became like a mother for me. And well, I also communicate with her every now and then, but in everyday life I sometimes forget about this love that I felt over there and the welcome, this being welcomed. Um, well, this is what I miss very much. Because here on earth things are quite different and I think that many, many people who have had an experience similar to my own feel like me. See also other interesting videos about life after death on our channel.